You have spoken about and thought about nuclear war a lot. Uh, over the past year, we've seemingly have come closest to the precipice of nuclear war than uh, at least in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you learn about human nature from that? It's our old friend Moloch again. It's really scary to see it where America doesn't want there to be a nuclear war. Russia doesn't want there to be a global nuclear war either. We know we both know that it's, it would be just be another. If we just try to do it, it, both sides try to launch first. It's just another suicide race, right? So why are we? Why is it the way you said that this is the closest we've come since 1962? In fact, I think we've come closer now than even the Cuban Missile Crisis. It's because of Moloch. You know, you, you you have these other forces. On one hand, you have. Um, the West saying that uh, we have to drive Russia out of Ukraine. It's a matter of pride. And we've staked so much on it that it would be seen as a huge loss of the credibility of the West if we don't drive Russia out entirely of the Ukraine. And uh, on the other hand, you have Russia who um, has, um, and you have the Russian leadership who knows that if they get completely driven out of Ukraine, you know, it might, it's not just going to be very humiliating for them, but they might, it often happens when countries lose wars that the, things don't go so well for their leadership either. Like, you remember when Argentina inv invaded the Falkland Islands? Mm -hmm. the, the military junta that ordered that, right? People were uh, cheering on the streets at first when they, when they took it. And then when they got their butt kicked by the British, you know what happened to those guys? They were out. And I believe those who are still alive are in jail now, right? So, so you know, the, the Russian leadership is entirely cornered where they know that uh, just getting driven out of Ukraine is just not an option. Um, and... Um, so, so this to me is a m typical example of Moloch. You, you have these incentives of the two parties where both of them are just driven to escalate more and more, right? If Russia starts losing in the conventional warfare, the only thing they can do since they're back against the war is to keep escalating. Mm -hmm. And but and the West has put itself in the, in the situation now where we're sort of already committed to, to drive Russia out. So the only option the West has is to call Russia's bluff and keep sending in more weapons. Uh, this really bothers me because Moloch can sometimes drive competing parties to do something which is ultimately just really bad for both of them. And, uh, you know, what makes me even more worried is not just that I th it's, it's difficult to see an ending, a, a quick peaceful ending to this tragedy that doesn't involve some horrible escalation, uh, but also that we understand more clearly now just how horrible it was going it would be. There was an amazing paper that was published in, uh, in Nature Food this uh, August by some of the top researchers who've been studying nuclear winter for a long time. And what they basically did was they combined climate models with food agricultural models. So instead of just saying, yeah, you know, it gets really cold, blah, 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 they figured out actually how many people would die in the different different countries. Mm -hmm. And it, it's uh, it's pretty mind-blowing. You know, so basically what happens, you know, is the, the thing that kills the most people is not the explosions, it's not the radioactivity, it's not the EMP mayhem, it's not the the rampaging mobs, foraging food. No, it's 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 the fact that you get so much smoke coming up from the burning cities into the stratosphere that um it spreads around the earth from the jet streams. So in, in typical models, you get like 10 years or so where it's just crazy cold. And during the first year or after the, the war, in, in their models, the temperature drops in, in Nebraska and in the Ukraine bread baskets, you know, by like 20 Celsius or so, if I remember. No, yeah, 20, 30 Celsius, depending on where you are, 40 Celsius in some places, which is, you know, 40 Fahrenheit to 80 Fahrenheit colder than what it would normally mm -hmm. be. So, you know, I'm not <laughs> good at farming, but uh, <laughs> if it's snowing 
oh, if it drops wow. below freezing pretty much almost, most days in July, and then like that's not good. So they worked out, they put this into their farming models. And what they found was really interesting. The countries that get the most hard hit are the ones in the Northern Hemisphere. So in, in the U.S., and and one model they had, they had about 99% of all Americans starving to death. In Russia and China and Europe, also about 99%, 98% starving to death. So you, you might be like, oh, it's kind of poetic justice that both the Russians and the Americans, 99% of them have to pay for it because it was their bombs that did it. But, you know, that doesn't particularly cheer people up in Sweden or just other random countries that have nothing to do with it, right? And... Um, it, uh, I think it hasn't entered the mainstream, uh, not understanding very much just like how bad this is. Uh, most people, especially a lot of people in decision making positions, still think of nuclear weapons as something that makes you powerful, uh, scary, but powerful. They don't think of it as something where, uh, yeah, just. To within a percent or two, you know, we're all just just gonna starve to death, and um, and starving to death is is um, the worst way to die. As Holodomor, as all all the famines in history mm -hmm. show, the torture involved in that probably brings out the worst in people. Also, when when people are desperate like this, it's not so. So some people, I've heard some people say that. If that's what's going to happen, they'd rather be at ground zero and just get vaporized, you know. And, and, but uh, so, and, but I think people underestimate the risk of this because they 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 aren't afraid of Moloch. They think, oh, it's just going to be because humans don't want this, so it's not going to happen. That's the whole point of Moloch: that things happen that nobody wanted. And that applies to nuclear weapons, and that applies to AGI. Exactly. And it applies to some of the things that people have gotten most upset with capitalism for also, right? Uh, where everybody was just kind of trapped, you know? It's not to see if some company does something uh, that causes a lot of harm. And it's not that the CEO is a bad person, but she or he knew that, you know, that the other, all the other companies were doing this too. So Moloch is, um, is a formidable foe. I hope wish someone would <laughs> make him make make good movies so we can see who the real enemy is. So we don't because we're not fighting against each other. Uh, Moloch makes us fight against each other. That's Mol That's what Moloch's superpower is. The hope here is any kind of technology or other mechanism that lets us instead realize that we're fighting the wrong enemy. I right know. It's such it, a fascinating battle. It's not fighting. us versus them. It's us versus it. Yeah. Yeah. We are fighting Moloch for human survival. Yeah. We as a civilization. Have you seen the movie Needful Things? It's a Stephen King novel. Mm -hmm. I love Stephen King. And uh, Max von Sydow, Swedish actor, is playing the guy. It's brilliant. It's actually, I just thought I hadn't thought about that until now. But that's the closest I've seen to a, a movie about Moloch. I don't want to spoil the film for anyone who's, who wants to watch it, but basically it's, it's about this guy who uh, turns out to, you can interpret him as the devil or whatever, but he doesn't actually ever go around and kill people or torture people with go burning coal or anything. He makes everybody fight each other, it makes everybody hate, fear each other, hate each other, and then kill each other. <laughs> so that that's the movie about Moloch, you know? Love is the answer. That seems to be... Um one of the ways to fight Moloch is by um, compassion, by seeing the common humanity. Yes, yes. And to not sound, so we don't sound like, like a uh, bunch of kumbaya tree huggers here, right? <laughs> we're not just saying love and peace, man. We're, we're, we're trying to actually help people understand the true facts yeah. about the other side and feel the compassion because the truth makes you more compassionate, right? So I, I th that's why I, I really like using AI for truth and for truth-seeking technologies that can that can, uh, as a result, you know, get us more love th than hate. And 
and um, even if you can't get love, you know, settle for settle for some understanding, which already gives <laughs> compassion. Yeah. If someone is like, you know, I really disagree with you, Lex, but I can see why you're where you're coming from. You're not a, a bad person who needs to be destroyed, uh, but I disagree with you, and I'm happy to have an argument about it. You know, that's a lot of progress compared to where we are, 2023, in the public space, wouldn't you say? 